Well, the Lightning are ahead three to one, and this has not even been that close of a series. Um, I'm just gonna start right away with this, guys. Uh, what have we learned so far? Starting with you, Anthony. I, I think we've learned just how Tampa Bay's, you know, three steps ahead of Montreal. They're just clearly the better team. Um, I don't know what else you could say. You know, Montreal, uh, they've had a really great run. Nice Cinderella story, but it's definitely going to be ending soon. Um, it's good they, they do at least be able to get one win in front of the fence last night, an overtime win. Um, but I, I don't see them, you know, completing this comeback and forcing a game seven. Uh, Tampa Bay is just, like I said, they're just a better team in really every area of the ice. Uh, and for Montreal to really have a chance in this series, they need to carry Price to be, you know, godly. And, you know, he was good last night, but the prior couple of games, um, he wasn't that good. I think his save percentage in this series going to last night was like 8-something, 8 830 or 840, something along those lines. Um, and you you can't you can't win when you're getting that type of goal. Thing, so. Um, you know, kudos to Montreal for getting this far. Kudos to them, you know, avoiding the sweep. Uh, but, you know, I, I just think Tampa Bay is going to wrap this up sooner than later. Phil? Yeah, Montreal had an easy road. That's definitely the first thing that I've learned. Uh, they probably had the easiest road of any team to the Stanley Cup Finals since the 93 Montreal Canadiens, who beat the Nordiques in six games in the first round. Then they faced and swept a upset Buffalo Sabres team who came off of a huge upset over the Boston Bruins in that 92-93 uh, series with the May Day goal and everything. And then you had uh, the Islanders, who Pierre Turgeon was not clearly at 100% after the Dale Hunter incident. And they got to the Stanley Cup Finals, and they beat the Kings, and they ended up winning. But that was probably the other team that I've seen that's had as easy as a rose of this team. Because if you think about it, the Maple Leafs, Anthony called them paper tigers. Probably the most accurate you know, description I've seen of the, uh, the Leafs. Um, then you have the Mark Shively list Winnipeg Jets after the Jake Evans hit. And that basically took them out of the series. They were done after that. Um, not that I think that they were going to win the series to begin with, but it just, I don't know. It, 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 that, after that that game, I was like, okay, you know, I, I don't see this team winning, even though I picked Winnipeg to win. <laughs> nah, you wouldn't have been alone, so don't worry about that. Yeah. yeah. But after that first game, I knew they weren't winning that series, even if Shifley wasn't suspended. So, but, um, and then you go, you go to Vegas, and, uh, Funny enough, Vegas just, I don't know what happened with them. They just, Montreal played great. Price was good. But I think Vegas shot themselves in their own foot and their forwards just disappeared. And that's why they're they're facing a much better team than any team they could come across. I think the, I think the Islanders probably could have beaten Montreal too. So um, I would say. More on that later. Yeah, more on that later, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's funny to see how a team that had such an easy road, gets the finals, faces a real tough team, and now they're just getting smacked around. They were lucky to pull that one out because they almost blew that game. And it, it, you know what i tell you? If, if, if they would have converted on that power play, Shea Weber would have been the most villainized player in Montreal Canadiens history. And the riots would have been off the charts in Montreal last night. Would have been nuts. Fortunately, there would have been nobody inside the building to really riot. Um, the, the, the thing that can't help but look at this series is the turnover numbers and Montreal's turnovers. Uh, actually, they've, they've actually gotten better than they were in the previous three series, but Tampa's just taking every turnover they got and putting it right in the back of the net. Um, I, I do have to get to this and people say stupid things. We know this. Uh, I say it a lot. Uh, I say lots of stupid stuff. We'll we'll put it all a uh, montage of this one time. But when the Tampa Bay light, uh, the Tampa Bay mayor says she's rooting against the Lightning so they can win it at home, it's the dumbest thing in the world to say. First of all, because it's bolted more material. Secondly, um, you the fourth game is always the toughest to win, um, and the last one is. 
What are you, a moron? Who cares? Just win the damn game. After all, you got, um, uh, let's see. The Pittsburgh Penguins won three Stanley Cups. None of them were at home. The Chicago Blackhawks, between 19, I think it was 38, to 2015, did not win a Stanley Cup at home. Um, the Pittsburgh, oh, I guess I said the Pittsburgh Penguins again. So the Lightning uh, didn't win it last year at home. The St. Louis Blues did not win it at home. They were in Boston. Uh, the Washington Capitals won it in Vegas. I could go on and on. Win the damn game. Who the hell cares where you do, where you win it? I mean, why? Because you need to have every championship in Tampa, you greedy bastards. So, and one thing I can't help but go to is the fourth, uh, the first lead of the series last night was at 421 of the first period. Montreal is D-U-N done. So... Just because they got a stay of execution last night, and let's be honest, it's a stay of execution. It will happen. But this has been I have this I had this with this quote locked and loaded, and I'm still backing it. This has been one of the most boring Stanley Cup finals I've ever watched. And even the amount of times the games have been tied haven't been much. You might want to say, no, nah, no, nah, Mark, what about uh um, hell, the Rangers went out in five in 2014. Yeah, that was still back and forth games. And uh, the Rangers held the lead most of those games. Three, uh, Two of those games, they had the lead until the final goal was scored, which would be in overtime. So, no. No. Oh, and by the way, the Kings won one at home. Oh, they won both at home. All right, good thing I kept talking. Again, it, people say stupid things. Uh, so, in that case... Uh, I know you guys said Carey Price. I'm not gonna put it. I'm I'm not gonna put it all on his shoulders. But what's disappointing you so far in the series? Carey Price. Uh, yeah, I, I, you, sorry. You, you, you can't you can't avoid the elephant in the room. It, it's Carey Price. You, you you gotta you gotta go with him. He, he just hasn't been good. And I know that a lot of Montreal fans will jump right down my throat and say, "Oh, well, the team in front of him didn't turn over the puck so much." And uh, all, you know, and everything like that and all this other stuff. And they would make every excuse in the world for him and, and so on. But Carey Price has not been good. He's not. The team in front of him hasn't been good, but he hasn't either. You got to make saves. And he hasn't. He just hasn't. I mean, he was – I would say he was good last night. But Tampa hit three posts in that game. And that could have easily, easily been an inch or two off and we're talking about a sweep, and we don't have content for about the Stanley Cup Finals for any any longer. And, you know, we're going into off-season mode here. So, yeah, it, it's got to be Carey Price. Um, I need more out of Cole Caulfield, too. I really do. He's been invisible in this series, so I need more. And also, my apologies. I actually thought you were just going to go Carey Price and then stop talking. So, Anthony. No. Carey Price. Uh, Carey Price needs to be better than Andre Vasilevsky to give the Canadians a chance, and he hasn't done that. Uh, granted, his team hasn't been good either, but for how how he touted he's been, and for all we'll talk about how great he is, um, you know, he, he really needs to step up, and he hasn't so far. Uh, you know, he played he played good last night, good enough to get them the win, so kudos to him, but, uh, you know, if Montreal wants any chance of getting back in the series, he has to take his game up at least two or three notches. Um, and I'm going to go with their, their offense. I know they scored three goals last night, but, uh, really it's to whoever was going to score the third goal was inevitable. Um, but five goals through three games and then you get three last night. I know if you just average that out, that's two per game, but still that's not going to cut it. Not against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, um, we're just going to jump right ahead to who needs to step up for game five, Anthony. Uh, I mean, aside from saying, uh, you know, Gary Price here, I'll actually go with uh, Shea Weber. Um, Shea Weber's their their captain. Uh, it's been often said, you know, I know we mentioned throughout this whole process that Andres Lee missing was, was devastating for the Isles. Captains usually pull, they pull the team in the fight. They can get them going with a goal, a, a, you know, a, a speech, a big hit. Shea Weber needs to... Get the team going, believing that they could do this, whether it be, you know, uncorking Clapper in, in game five that gets them on the board early or, 
or just defending really well or take whatever gold. Um, I think he's the captain, he's the leader, he's got to step up in some fashion. Tyler Toffoli, for a guy who was their leading scorer in the postseason heading into this series, I haven't seen anything from him. Um, I barely noticed him when he's out there. He just doesn't, it, it, he's not the same player right now. He needs to step up. I, I would say if you want to give someone from Tampa, it's got to be Steven Stamkos. Uh, he, I know I've been on him all postseason, but aside from his two-goal game in Game 5, where it seemed everybody was scoring on the Islanders, Steven Stamkos has been non-existent for three playoff rounds. Uh, you, you need something out of him. Because, actually, you know what? I changed my pick. I'm going to watch that, change my pick. Braden Point, time for you to score a goal. You had him in nine straight, and you've done nothing since. Step up. Because you're losing that consmite from Nikita Kucherov with every game you play. And uh, you know what? Damn it, I was actually going to go Braden Point. Uh, so, yeah, you know what? I'm going to agree with you. Braden Point and definitely that, that Suzuki line. They need to step up. They need to do something. If you don't want to say them, if you don't, don't want me to give you a copy, can't answer. How about the Eric Stahl line? You're the ones with the veterans. Where the hell were you in this like series? It. I mean, you got two guys that won Stanley Cups on that line. Um, granted, you were both like in kindergarten in the NHL when that happened. But still, you know, class draft class of 2003, and I'm not mentioning who you should not be named. So what is your headline after game five, Phil? Tampa wins back-to-back -back championships despite uh, losing on road makes mayor's wishes come true. Anthony. Well, oh, it pains me to say, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning become, you know, first game since Pittsburgh to win back-to-back -back cups. Pat Maroon was third straight. I'm going to go with a simple one. Lightning strikes twice, and that's it. You can win the championship that way. I actually never even put on the ticker on this because that's – I'm just – just to conclude this segment before I, I, I give the sign-off, guys, but – has this, there just been no buzz about this series whatsoever? Like, and I just, I, I questioned some of the NHL missteps, like that it, there's no game on Saturday night. Hockey night in Canada? No game? Fourth of July parties. Oh, okay. I People mean, don't turn on the TV during Fourth of July parties? It, it's true. It's Fourth of July parties. I mean... You're in America. America's celebrating Independence Day weekend. There's going to be parties everywhere. Viewership would probably be low. I kind of can't blame them for that. But you're right, though. This is the most, this is one of, I would say, top three for me. Most boring Stanley Cup final series I've ever watched. I would I would say the other two were probably Detroit's back-to-back -back wins in 97 and 98 because they absolutely kicked the crap out of the Flyers and the Capitals. The Capitals were lucky to beat the Buffalo Sabers. So, you know the Flyers games. I think the Flyers games. I think were actually pretty decent until they got to Detroit. Yeah, uh, that the swept. two games. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, don't get me wrong. They got swept. I mean, what about Anaheim versus Ottawa? Oh, two thousand seven. Yeah, that was another boring one. That that's that's definitely my top five or six. And you know what? I, I got to agree with you on, on the, the Capitals one, Phil. They had a good game one, and then after that... That was it. It wasn't even close. Yeah. Um, but okay, we want to know what you think about the Stanley Cup Finals. Put it all in the comments below. Did you like the video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here, or right here. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.